Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is, how is vitamin D related to gut inflammation and autoimmunity? And this is a pretty big question because autoimmunity uh, levels are growing substantially in the United States, in the world, especially um, the more developing world. And there are a lot of theories behind it, but one of them is mainly related to leaky gut. And leaky gut is just a general term for gut inflammation that causes uh, permeability or basically holes in the gut lining that allow um, bacteria to enter, that allow undigested food particles to enter. And these can then, these food particles or bacteria can activate the immune system either in the gut or in the blood and lead to development of antibodies to those proteins or to those uh, bacteria. And what happens then is we develop this immune response to those things and that can possibly lead to cross reactivity where then the antibodies uh, that we're producing starts to overreact with the things we're eating or the things uh, in our gut and then start reacting with uh, maybe uh, myelin that cover axons around the nerve sheath that leads to MS or multiple sclerosis or it may lead to binding to joints and causing rheumatoid arthritis um, or binding to the thyroid gland leading to Hashimoto's um, or Hashimoto's thyroiditis and hypothyroidism. And so there are many autoimmune diseases and a lot of it's all brought back to the gut and gut function. And so today I wanna to talk about a paper that's specifically looking at vitamin D's effect on the microbiome and the gut and how this can maybe help with autoimmune diseases um, and by decreasing gut inflammation. So let's go right into this paper here. Um, this is from Frontiers in Microbiology. Um, I'm pretty sure it was, yep, it was a 2019 article and it's called Skin Exposure to Narrowband UV or Narrowband Ultraviolet um, light modulates the human intestinal microbiome. So basically, um, getting in the sun, getting UVB light modulates the microbiome. And we're going to just discuss the, the article, uh, discuss the abstract. And so, like I just mentioned, there's a worldwide increase in idiopathic immune and inflammatory diseases like autoimmune diseases like MS and inflammatory bowel diseases, this would be like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Um, and they've been linked to the Western society changes in lifestyle and environment. Um, these include a decreased exposure to sunlight or UVB light and a subsequent impairment in the production of vitamin D, as well as dysbiotic changes in the makeup of the gut microbiome. Okay, so sorry I just read that, but basically what it's saying is that, um, you know, we eat, we, we eat a lot differently in the Western world. We're more stressed out in the Western society, um, but we also are stuck indoors most of the time, especially in the northern latitudes um, and where we don't get as much sunlight in the winter. And so this can lead to a decreased production of vitamin D. Um, and then possibly these changes in the gut microbiome. Um, okay, so exposing the skin to narrow band UV light, UVB light, um, we're trying, they're trying to see if it would increase serum vitamin D levels, which would modulate the makeup of the human microbiome. And so they took 21 healthy human females. And so there was females between the ages of 19 and 40 that participated and they were all healthy, so no diseases. Um, they were separated into two groups. There were nine uh, participants that said they did not take any vitamin D supplements. Um, I believe I'll, I'll go back down and look at that. Um, and the, so they had ones that did not take vitamin D supplements, VDS negative, or ones that did take vitamin D supplements during the winter. And so this was, this, uh, was looking at, uh, people in Canada. And so 
this was during the winter and so they did not get much sunlight during that time. And then based on their starting levels, they were then given three different light exposures in one week um, and their serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels, so basically what is most common and floating around the, the, the blood, uh, increased on average of 7.3 nanomoles per liter. Okay, so that's, that's a plus. At the same time, the exposure to uh, the exposure to the light also significantly increased the alpha and beta diversity in the vitamin D negative group, so ones that did not have the supplements, whereas there was no changes in the ones that were already taking vitamin D as a supplement. And so what this means is that alpha and beta diversity is one of the things that we look at in the microbiome when we're looking at a healthy gut microbiome. The research in the microbiome is so vast and we still don't know a lot about it. But we do know that generally a more diverse microbiome leads to better health outcomes. And so vitamin D, vitamin D made from the UVB light or the sunlight increased the alpha and beta diversity, therefore improving the microbiome. Um, this also correlated with the increase in the 25 hydroxy vitamin D concentrations in the blood, which is pretty cool. Um, and so they were just kind of looking at there's this existence of a novel skin gut axis. So we talk about the brain gut axis and how the gut affects the brain and the brain affects the gut, but there is also maybe this skin gut axis. And that way the skin can actually affect the gut and therefore the skin can then affect the brain indirectly. Um, this kind of makes sense in how we develop an embryology. The brain and the skin actually come from the same exact germ layer. It's called the neuroectoderm. Um, and then the gut comes from the more inside called the endoderm. So real quick, I want to talk about a couple of things in the article. So in humans, 80% of our vitamin D requirements need to be met by UVB light. That means we only get about 20% of the vitamin D that we need um, from our food. And so we need to get UVB light. We need this, this light. Um, that's between the wavelengths of 280 and 315 nanomolars. Um, and that this is how we can produce vitamin D. I will talk about that more in a sec with a, with a photo here. Uh, then let's go down all the way to the end. No, I want to do one more thing. So this is what I was talking about before. We had... Here we go. So out of the 21 participants, nine said that they took vitamin D supplements in the past three months. Therefore, 12 of them did not take any. The ones that did take vitamin D supplements were between 500 IUs and 3,500 IUs per day, which is generally about what, what is normal. Um, 500 to 1,000 is what I normally recommend. But uh, so some people were clearly taking more than, more than what I would recommend. Um, and what it, what it turned out then is that the people that were taking the supplements had vitamin D levels that were over 75 nanomoles per liter, which is sufficient. And the people that weren't, they were more in the insufficient range, which was 25 to 75 nanomoles per liter. There was one outlier that somehow had way more. I'm not sure why, but they're, for the most part, the ones not taking vitamin D supplements had lower vitamin D concentrations. Okay. Now, let's go down just to the conclusion. So right here. So it's been known that humans display seasonal fluctuations in their microbiome composition, potentially coinciding with the fluctuations in the serum vitamin D levels of the year. This could be related to food availabilities, but also seasons over the year um, can cause the decrease in the, the ultraviolet light. And so specifically, there's been known evidence that there's relapse in remitting nature of ear, or inflammatory bowel disease and multiple sclerosis, and they're strongly associated with vitamin D levels. Therefore, exasperations in, 
inflammatory bowel disease activity are also commonly reported with low vitamin D. So this shows that a couple autoimmune diseases have a link into vitamin D or have a link with vitamin D levels. And therefore this skin gut access, the, the exposure to sunlight is super important for getting vitamin D status at a normal level to therefore calm down the immune response. And that immune response can then um, be more regulated so it doesn't start attacking tissues of our own body. And so this, I just thought was a really cool article showing the link between how vitamin D affects the gut microbiome, um, not, just, not just vitamin D affecting the immune system and that, and that whole aspect. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about this. And so vitamin D is really not a vitamin. Okay, sorry, let's do that again. Okay, vitamin D is really not a vitamin. It's actually a hormone. And vitamin D is down here in the bottom, calcitriol. And so calcitriol is 1,25-hydroxy vitamin D. And so what happens is it all starts from cholesterol or 7-dehydrocholesterol that is stored in the skin. And UVB light comes in to activate the enzyme to convert 7-dehydrocholesterol into pre-vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 then is converted into cholecalciferol, vitamin D3. And then from there, it goes into the blood and it has to go to the liver where more enzymes, there are uh, cytochrome P450 enzymes, enzymes that are specifically in the liver to convert this cholecalciferol into calcifidiol, which is just 25 hydroxy vitamin D. This is what we measured. This is what was measured in that study. So this then is converted, it. it has to go to the kidney and the kidney has another enzyme to convert it into vitamin D, the actual hormone. And so there's this huge long process to, to get vitamin D levels to where we want them. And so even though we measure this, uh, this calcifidiol or 25-hydroxy vitamin D, that doesn't mean we have optimal hormone calcitriol status. There can be a problem in this conversion. We don't know that. This is just the cheapest and easiest way to measure vitamin D levels. And so if we don't get it from UVB light, then we need to take it in supplement form. Okay, so let's go first into the skin. Having getting less sun, getting more UVA is going to decrease this conversion. Putting that in sunscreen blocks the UVB light, so we're not getting it. Uh, if we have darker skin, that's also a natural sunscreen, so that's not going to increase our pre vitamin D3 levels. As we age, we have less conversion for overweight. And also if we don't get enough cholesterol in our diets or in our skin, then we're not going to actually make but this pre-vitamin D3 to then make vitamin D for this effect that we're talking about uh, by regulating the immune system and the microbiome. At the same time, if we're in the winter and we're not outside getting the sun, we can take it in supplement form. This would be taking vitamin D3 supplements. So we're taking cholecalciferol. And it needs to be absorbed. So we have to get sufficient vitamin D in foods, right? Um, but if we don't have a gallbladder, we may not absorb it as well because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. Low magnesium can prevent that. Too much polyunsaturated fat. So these are the omega-3 and the omega-6 fats coming from vegetable oils. And again, as we age, we don't absorb our nutrients as much. And so therefore, taking it in supplement form can be, can be a problem. So I really wanted to emphasize this, is that even though we say that we need to take vitamin D supplements in the winter when we're not getting outside, in the summer we have to get outside and get some sun to get that vitamin D, we also have to be prepared to maybe get a little bit of exposure without sunscreen. Um, if we are darker skinned, if we're African American, we need to get out and be out there longer because we're not gonna get as much vitamin D. And that is even more important in the winter then because most African-Americans have insufficient vitamin D status. 
So that's where taking vitamin D is very important uh, in the winter. And so um, I hope you ladies like this art article. I thought it was really interesting to see how there is this skin gut access as well as we know that there's a brain gut access. And I think it's really cool how we can relate the skin or the sunlight causing an increase in vitamin D, which then helps the gut microbiome and helping the gut microbiome can decrease inflammation and improve our risk from, from autoimmune diseases like inflammatory bowel disease and multiple sclerosis and many others. And so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy.